Simplify everyone and welcome to the latest installment of Recon Jack. I'm your host, U.S. Marine veteran and historian Chuck Lynch. On today's episode, I'll discuss the Mark I and Mark II fragmentation grenades. A grenade is an explosive device typically thrown by hand and generally consists of an explosive charge, a detonation piece, an internal striker to trigger the detonator, and a safety lever secured by a cotter pin. There are several different shapes, sizes, and types, but with fragmentation grenades being the most common in modern militaries, we'll focus on those carried by Marines in both world wars. The Mark I grenade is a fragmentation grenade used by American forces during World War I. According to its designers, it was the simplest most foolproof grenade ever made. This even implied that any devil dog with an ASVAB waiver could properly utilize the grenade with ease. However, some major problems occurred when the grenade was used in the field. They put it in the hands of a typical dog face doughboy army soldier and apparently too many of them tried to eat it. When American forces entered World War I, they lacked a fragmentation grenade of their own and often received either British Mills bomb or French F1 grenades. When it came time to make their own hand grenade, American designers looked to the French F1 grenade for its inspiration. Surprisingly, the French had a better design, but I can't necessarily say the same for their Navy's flag during the Bourbon Restoration from 1814 to 1830. In 1917, the Mark I fragmentation hand grenade was created. The Mark I had a time fuse and had 32 serrations on it. To start the fuse, the user had to pull the safety pin, then push off the cap on top of the grenade. Right before throwing it, the user must first move the switch on the lever away from the grenade in order to start the fuse. However, it became apparent that the Mark I grenade was quite difficult to use in the field. The grenades were often not ignited properly before being thrown and supposedly enemies would return it after properly igniting the grenade. I'm not certain how the common German soldier knew better how to use an American-made grenade than our own infantrymen in the trenches. The Mark I was immediately recalled for obvious reasons that even Private Schmuckatelli could understand, and production was immediately stopped. The grenade was retired from service even before the war's end, and it was replaced in 1918 with the improved Mark II grenade, which would see use throughout World War II. The Mark I-A1 was an inert cast iron training grenade. It has a simulated fuse with a removable pin and safety lever. They were manufactured for a brief time during World War I to train troops on how to initiate and throw the Mark I and Mark II fragmentation grenades. Early in the United States entry in World War II, a number of these grenades were produced as training aids in 1942. Its markings consist of a black body with a narrow white band around the top. The Mark II grenade did not immediately replace the failed Mark I grenade used by the U.S. military in World War I. Although 44 million were ordered and more than 21 million were completed before the war ended, few reached American troops overseas. The Mark II was the standard issue anti-personnel grenade used during World War II and was intended to be gradually phased out of service as a M26 grenade was introduced during the Korean War. Due to the the tremendous quantity of Mark II grenades produced during World War II, it was still seeing limited use during the 1950s and 1960s throughout the United States Marine Corps, finally being completely phased out by the M33 design. The Mark II, like the Mark I, was manufactured of cast iron with grooved surface divided into 40 knobs in five rows of eight columns. This was intended to enhance fragmentation. In practice, it was found that the grooves did not enhance fragmentation fragmentation as much as desired, as well as to provide a better grip when handling and throwing the grenade. The grooves and knobs gave it the appearance of a pineapple, hence the origin of its nickname. It was also commonly referred to as a frag grenade, in contrast to other types of grenades, such as the Mark III concussion grenade, which also saw use during World War II and World War I. The original Mark II grenade had a 3 8 inch threaded plug in its base, which covered the opening used to place 
the explosive filling. Either TNT, a number of other explosive mixtures, and a smokeless EC powder. The improved Mark II A1, a design used informally by armors, historians, and collectors alike, but never by the US military, introduced in 1942, was filled through the fuse wall instead. The Mark II A1 was initially filled with EC powder, but in 1942, it also was replaced with TNT. Mark II grenades came 25 to a wooden crate and were shipped in small fiberboard packing tubes. High explosive fill Mark IIs had their fuses shipped separately in flat cardboard boxes of 25 to prevent accidental discharge and detonation. Whereas EC powder filled grenades were shipped with their fuses attached. Pre-World War II high explosive Mark II grenades were painted a bright yellow color. Low explosive filled Mark IIs had their cast iron bodies painted gray or black to prevent rust. Beginning in 1943, grenades were over painted in olive drab. You can even note some of the original yellow paint showing through. And they left a narrow yellow band around the neck to denote that it was high explosive. However, not all were overpainted by the war's end, but the last produced models of the war were originally painted olive drab and emitted the base filler plug. Mark II practice grenades were painted red and utilized a black powder spotting charge in a cardboard tube connected to an igniting fuse. It has a standard body with a wooden or cork plug that pops out of the base during detonation, which would create a lab report and smoke to indicate ignition. The body could be reused and reloaded as long as it remained intact. The M21 practice grenades and fuse spoons were painted light blue, often with the M painted brown, indicating a low explosive charge. It also utilized a spotting charge and an igniting fuse, but had a heavier body without base plug. Its body was embossed with the vertical letters RDX on the knobs and a column on the side because it was originally designed to be used with a high explosive grenade with a more powerful RDX filler inside. Now all kidding aside, I hope you enjoyed today's episode of Recon Jack and perhaps you learned something new. Special thanks to any army soldiers past and present as well as any of my French viewers out there for being able to take a joke. Again, I may have only scratched the surface of today's topic, so stay tuned for more episodes as I continue to explore the hallowed history, traditions, and individuals of the United States Marine Corps. Please feel free to like this video, subscribe to my channel, and leave a comment below. I love hearing back from you folks and look forward to reading your feedback. Also, don't forget to tell a friend or family member. And until next time, Semper Fi and carry on.